coming up on 5-Minute News. Trump says he never confronted Putin about Russia bounty. US to withdraw 12,000 troops from Germany. And drones deliver COVID-19 tests to Ghana. It's Thursday, July 30. I'm Anthony Davis. Donald Trump said he never questioned Russian leader Vladimir Putin about the US intelligence reports that Moscow paid the Taliban to kill American troops in Afghanistan, casting doubt on the reports in an interview with Axios. Trump, who has sought to cultivate warmer relations with Moscow, has said he was not briefed on the matter before it emerged in news media in late June. He has called the reports a hoax. Democrats in Congress have accused Trump of not taking intelligence information concerning soldiers' deaths seriously enough. Trump has been dogged by criticism that he has been too friendly towards Moscow since taking office. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien has said Trump was not verbally briefed on the Russian bounty intelligence because his CIA briefer concluded the reports were uncorroborated. White House officials have not denied the information was included in the president's daily brief that it is reported Trump rarely reads. Some news outlets reported the issue was included in the brief in February. It never reached my desk, said the president. You know why? They didn't think it was real, Trump said. I wouldn't mind. If it reached my desk, I would have done something about it. Trump has spoken to Putin at least eight times since the intelligence was first included in his briefing. Senator Angus King, an independent who sits on the Intelligence Committee, said he found Trump's comments astonishing. King said he was confident the bounty reports were not fake news. I don't know what could be more important than the Russians providing incentives to take the lives of Americans, he said. I don't have any explanation, except that it's part of a pattern that is no surprise to anybody that the president has been very reluctant to cross President Putin. The New York Times first reported in June that U.S. intelligence had concluded that a Russian military intelligence unit had offered the Taliban payments of up to $100,000 for each U.S. or Allied soldier killed. America will bring around 6,400 forces home and shift about 5,600 to other countries in Europe, U.S. defense leaders said on Wednesday, detailing a Pentagon plan that will cost billions of dollars and take years to complete. The decision fulfills Trump's announced desire to withdraw troops from Germany. A number of forces will go to Italy, and a major move would shift US-European Command Headquarters and Special Operations Command Europe from Stuttgart, Germany, to Belgium. The future of the plan is uncertain, at best since it relies on support and funding from Congress, and a number of members have voiced opposition there. It may not survive at all if Trump isn't re-elected. Lawmakers have condemned the troop cuts as a gift to Russia, fueled by Trump's spite at Germany. But Defence Secretary Mark Esper defended the plan, saying that while the decision was accelerated by Trump's orders, the moves also promote larger strategic goals to deter Russia, reassure European allies and shift forces further east into the Black Sea and Baltic regions. Trump has repeatedly accused Germany of failing to pay bills, which is a misstatement of the issue. NATO nations have pledged to dedicate 2% of their gross domestic product to defence spending by 2024, and Germany is still short of that goal at about 1.4%. 22 Republicans on the House Armed Services Committee sent a letter to Trump saying a reduced US commitment to Europe's defence would encourage Russian aggression and Senator Mitt Romney of Utah on Wednesday called the plan a grave error, saying it's a slap in Germany's face that will do lasting harm to American interests. With the outbreak of COVID-19, many countries in Africa are struggling due to poor infrastructure, limited access to clean water, alarming rates of poverty and a lack of healthcare facilities and sanitation. 
Estimates determine that 21.4% of the people in Ghana live in poverty. However, one company is making a positive impact on the health crisis. Zipline is a Silicon Valley startup that uses drones to deliver essential healthcare equipment. Zipline delivers COVID-19 tests in less than 30 minutes, and it's the first initiative in the world to combine drone technology with medicine to stop the spread of COVID-19. The whole country of South Sudan only has four ventilators and 3,000 critical care beds. In Nigeria, there are less than 29 sites that test for COVID-19, despite having a population of 195 million. Zipline is a healthcare logistics and medical delivery company. Its drones collect the test samples and fly to their distribution centers located all across Ghana, and then Zipline packs the received samples into biosafe containers and places them into the drone bellies. Data from a John Hopkins study showed that the spread of COVID-19 across African countries is much slower in comparison to other regions of the world. The African continent has a population of 1.2 billion people, but only has 300,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases in comparison to North America, which recently crossed the 10 million mark. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app, ask your smart speaker, or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Visit us online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an independent production covering politics, inequality, health, and climate. Delivering unbiased, verified, and truthful world news daily.